Dr. Bruce Lipton is the best-selling author of The Biology of Belief. As a cellular biologist and former associate professor at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine, his pioneering research on cloned stem cells at Wisconsin presaged the revolutionary field of epigenetics, which is the new science of how environment and perception control genes. Subsequently, as a fellow in pathology at Stanford University's School of Medicine, his published research on the human immune system yielded insight into the biochemical pathways that bridge the mind-body duality. Dr. Lipton's new book is Spontaneous Evolution, Our Positive Future and a Way to Get There from Here. So what is spontaneous evolution? Well, it says that this process that uh, evolution that we've always talked about takes millions of years of imperceptible changes, turns out to not be a true understanding, that evolution takes big jumps very radically and very fast. And the book is called Spontaneous Evolution, not only because of the big jump, but because at this time, the world is in a state of almost like a terminal illness. And we're talking about civilization and the environment uh, uh, crashing. And what's important to understand is, as a terminally ill patient, can have a radical healing called a spontaneous remission by a radical change of belief mm -hmm. that we are poised as a civilization to experience a very similar radical upheaval. All we need to do is change our belief system ah. because our belief system is what is causing us to go toward extinction. Ah, okay. So your book subtitle mentions humanity's positive future. Absolutely. W where's the evidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, the evidence is that if, if we look at the nature of evolution, they're repeating patterns. And we're playing out a pattern right now, <clears throat> and the resolution of this pattern is a, uh, not the evolution of the individual human, it's the evolution of humanity as a superorganism. So we as humans are like cells in the body of something much larger. Mm -hmm. So we've been focusing on our individuality, but what we have to recognize our evolution is based on recognizing our community. Okay. And this yes. is what we have to recognize, cooperation and community is, is our salvation. Yeah. Yeah. So you say that civilization is a decline, and that's the good news. Well, yeah. <laughs> and how, how and why is that the good news? Well, it, it's a good news for this reason. Uh, Albert Einstein had a great quote. It says, uh, you cannot solve the problems with the same thinking that created them. We uh, scientists recognize are deep into what is called the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. And the institutions that we have, healthcare, academia, government, economy, uh, are based on beliefs uh, that are responsible for our decline. Uh -huh. And so, as Einstein would say, that the institutions that we have now, which are actually precipitating decline, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if they stay intact, they'll just facilitate the decline. Yeah, decline. So what we're seeing is all these crises are not individual events. They're all symptoms of the structure cannot stay the same and survive. Right. So right. the falling of the institution, which scares a lot of people, right. is actually, if you understand in perspective, is the only opportunity for our survival for in the first growth place. And, and change. Absolutely. So, so things that don't work are, are falling away. Absolutely. And this okay. is very specifically related to uh, health care and our social structure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. What does the new science of epigenetics tell us about our own powers? Oh, well, this is the most exciting change because what I was teaching in medical school as a conventional professor was a concept called genetic determinism. Genes control uh -huh. our traits. And well, why is that relevant? Well, as far as we know, we didn't pick our genes. Uh -huh. We can't change our genes if we don't like our traits. And uh, we can't influence our genes according to that belief system. Uh -huh. So what does it mean to us as people? It says, well, we're victims, victims of our heredity. Oh, there's cancer running in the family, Alzheimer's, right. or whatever the right. disease is. And you say, but I didn't pick the genes, but they're going to control me. So we acquire victim in this process. Mm -hmm. We then require a rescuer, right. which means like the pharmaceutical industry. We can't take yeah. care of ourselves. We need somebody else somebody to come and take care of us. us yeah. And uh, in that victim uh, state, we also become very irresponsible. Mm -hmm. If I can't do anything about it, why yeah. do I care? Yeah, and I give it to everybody else, and it's everybody else's fault. Now, that was called genetic control. The new science is called epigenetic control. Epi is a prefix that means above. Epidermis uh -huh. means, so means the means layer. So that means you can change it, correct? Well, yeah, because it turns out what the control above is the is mind. There. And so now here's, a, here's an exciting reality. Not only does the mind turn on and off the, the activity of the genes, but through the mind, this is a number that's staggering, 
you can modify every gene in your body to create 30,000 variations from the same gene blueprint. What we can do every day is to start to recognize that what we perceive in the environment, and what we think we see in the environment, is actually what controls the genetic activity. Mm -hmm. So, and then we look at children and how they're raised, and, and basically, we're raised with disempowering beliefs, limiting beliefs, self-sabotaging beliefs. Uh, I especially pre appreciate uh, on the other side of the hemisphere, New Zealand and Australia, they talk about child raising, they talk about cutting the tall poppies. Yeah. And what that really means the is tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, the yeah, tall yeah. poppy, so that Nobody's if a child goes above average, you just cut its head off and bring them down to average. Well, we've all been disempowered, uh, and as a result, we've, we've lost profound powers that we have, not because we don't have them, just because we don't believe we have them. You suggest that the intangibles such as love, harmony, and coherence are not only measurable, but show measurable benefits. In, in, in what ways? Well, basically, my research in, in, on stem cells, which was over 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I was cloning stem cells, revealed that I could put genetically identical cells in different Petri dishes, but if I change the environment, the cells have different fates. Right. And so my research revealed the genes didn't control the fate, it was the response to the environment, okay? Well, then I come back just to understand who we are. Uh, I said we look as single individual humans, but we're actually comprised of 50 trillion cells. Right. So essentially, we're skin-covered Petri dishes. <laughs> and the blood in our body is the culture medium. When I change the culture medium in my experiments, I change the fate of the cells. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the blood in our body controls the fate of the cells in our body, but the composition of the blood is controlled by the brain and the mind. Mm -hmm. So when we perceive love, for example, uh, we release a lot of oxytocin and, mm -hmm. and growth hormones, yeah, which sure. stimulate growth, maintenance, and harmony. But in contrast, if I have a fear or a stress, I release cortisol and norepinephrine yes, and norepinephrine, histamine. Yes. Well, this causes a protection response and shuts down the body and changes the behavior of the cells. How? My mind causes the brain to release the special chemicals which go mm -hmm. into the blood, and the blood's a culture medium and controls the fate. So basically, as you have different thoughts, you release different chemistry, right. and therefore you have finite control over the expression so of yourself. So, so putting yourself in the in a harmonious or loving environment will change the chemistry of the cells. Oh, absolutely, the because and the uh, blood. Uh, a growth environment, you're open, mm -hmm. and absolutely. maintenance and growth is supported. But uh, so anything wonderful. less than that, stressful, shuts it down, yeah. and that immediately leads to uh, disease and uh, yeah. Uh, dysfunction. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, how would you define spirituality? <laughs> well, it was fun. I never believed in spirituality, and that's why I went into science. I preferred the mechanistic point of view. Yeah. It's biochemicals and genes. But when I started to understand the mechanism by which the environmental signals control the genetics, I also recognized this, that each one of us is different. And I can say that because if I take cells out of your body and put it in anybody else, they're rejected as not self. Mm -hmm. I put any cells into my body, it's not mine. My immune system will say, say not no. self, right. reject it. I said, where's the self? And it turns out on the surfaces of our cells, there are antennas, like little television antennas. What makes us different are these antennas. Now people, wow. uh, actually medicine calls these antennas, uh, many of them called are self receptors. Actual, are they actual antennas or, yes. are they, or, or is it an energetic? It's an antenna like a tuning fork that okay. responds yeah. to vibration. Interesting. Okay? And so each of us have a different set of these antennas. Each of us is responding to a different vibration. And if I take off the self receptors, your cells are generic. They have no identity. If I take oh. my self receptors off my cells and put your self receptors on my cells, I would reject them, but you would accept them. Right. I can transfer ownership by the receptors. So we can say, oh, the receptors give self. And then I go, no, no, you don't understand. The receptors are antennas, they receive a signal of self. And so why is that relevant? Well, in, in a real sense, a body is like a television set receiving a station. I'm playing yes. the Bruce station right now. Mm -hmm. And the significance about that is, if the body dies, did I kill the broadcast? And the answer is no. Broadcast is always there, whether the body has the antennas right. on it or not. Right. If you get another body in the future, different embryo grows up with the same set right. of antennas, then your show is playing again. But it didn't say it was a male or female, or it was a white right, or right. black body. The body is just a television set. The identity is out there. So it says the identity is permanent, but the life comes and goes. Okay. I mean, I think you've said that. You might be the one person that could actually scientifically tell somebody who didn't think they were spiritual 
a scientific reason why they actually are. Oh yeah, I, and and again, to me it wasn't like a devotional belief, and that was interesting because I was non-spiritual for some forty some years, yeah. and then in a moment of about a minute when I finally understood the nature of this skin cell membrane brain yeah. of the cell, I said, "Oh my God!" It's like I went from non-spiritual. To it's spiritual, like, because it wasn't a matter of, like, what do you think about it? I said, it's not what no. I think about it. It's the mechanism. It's it's, it's, it, it works. Yeah. It's fascinating. I yeah. love it. I love it. But I have to shift gears because we're here because of <clears throat> spiritual cinema circles. So let's talk about movies. Oh, I love movies. What, is, what does spiritual film mean to you? And and I'd love to hear what what you think or your, what your favorite transformational films are. Well, uh, spiritual films to me, I guess, are, are films that that affect us intellectually, intelligently, energy, emotionally, and all that, rather than focusing on physical reality. Right. So if there's something out there that can give us a change of belief, and since belief controls biology, then there's an opportunity for a movie to actually change your biology when right. you go see a movie. So right. I would consider that the, some connection for me. That's great. Right. Do you have any favorites? I have a million favorites, and that was the hard part. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Uh, one of my my wonderful opportunities, I teach at this fabulous school in New Zealand every year for three or four years, the New Zealand mm -hmm. College of Chiropractic. And what I found about New Zealand is totally interesting compared to other countries, especially like our own, is that that is one country that when the British invaded and tried to take it over, they couldn't beat the Aboriginal people, the Maoris. Mm. And as a result, it's the only country where the original indigenous beliefs of the people are integrated and become part of sort of like the English beliefs that were they're, brought there. They're, they're culture. So yeah. the, the, the Maoris are like more or less the Native Americans. Yes. And so their spirituality uh, didn't get wiped out with them because mm -hmm. they brought it back into the, into the community. So um, uh, a film from New Zealand that, that, that I found was totally amazing was Whale Rider. Yes. Mm, I knew you were going to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. uh, and it's fun because I've experienced what it's like to live in New Zealand, and I experienced the movie, I've which is... I've been there. It's just an amazing country. It? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, and uh, and it, that emotionality uh, uh, that I... Every time I watch yeah. a film, I get to the same emotional place, and it's like, okay, I'm a guy, but I'll, I'll hold that... <laughs> I'm going to hold that back from dropping out of my eye uh, because... It was a, it was a, an evolution. Yeah. It was a historic understanding of the way the world is, with an understanding of an evolution. Yeah. That this young girl was trying to say, it's not just you guys that have this, this, mm -hmm. this ability to be spiritual, and and really her her strength and her uh, overcoming uh, the 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 males in the in the population mm -hmm. to acquire the status of look, I, I I'm as spiritual as anybody else mm -hmm. is in this room, mm -hmm. uh, and, and also uh, that this. Woman, this young girl at that point, uh, Keisha Castle Hughes, yes, I think her name. Yes. Uh, she wasn't any Hollywood actress. They just wow. found her in a school down there, mm -hmm. and I just thought, wow, she was yeah. fabulous doing yeah. that, so doing right that for role. The role. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I agree. Do you see films as an opportunity for social connection? I feel that it's one of the most important ones because we grew up in an era of television. So before us, generations before us were more reading yeah, uh, yeah. and getting their information that way. The television era hit us in the 50s at that mm -hmm. point, and we become more visually oriented. Yeah. So it, it, when I like give a lecture, uh, I, while I'm talking a lecture, I certainly provide lots of visual pictures, slides, animations, because people connect to the visual more yeah. than they connect to the words. And so it turns out that movies have uh, are, are the great form of literature today. It's true. It's and, true. And, and very powerful. So yeah. I think yes, they they are the teachers of today. Yeah. Who do you watch films with, and and, and where do you watch them? <laughs> well, almost anywhere, <laughs> especially on planes, because I yeah. do a lot of plane yeah. traveling, and so I bring my computer and watch yeah. all this. Yeah. Uh, uh, and my beautiful partner Margaret and I, uh, nice. uh, we we just love a great movie, uh, and 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 then it becomes uh, a communication between us and a discussion, and we yeah. share it, and so that really ties us together as well, and it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. So, if time, money, and talent weren't weren't an obstacle, what kind of film would you make? Oh, I actually had some really good ideas, of course. You know, being weird scientists. No, I, I like it. But uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I, I have uh, some wonderful ideas. Uh, uh, it's interesting because I wrote a screenplay treatment about 1985 it was guess what it was based on well there was a, a looming economic collapse of the country and the swine flu get out no absolutely and it was based on the concept that and it was called presumptive fiction at the time because when people read it right. they said is that, that could, real yeah, or not it happen. and it turns out uh, it's all very real that uh, with a vaccine Amazing. I can do psychosurgery 
I can, wow. I can, and so uh, the interest is you can control populations with a vaccine. <laughs> and it got real scary, and, and it was funny because I talked to a, a producer not that long ago, and I, I said, I've got this great thing. And it was just when the swine flu was just taking just off, and she off. said, oh, I can't believe this. And then uh, by the time we started even talk about it, it was going so far that the yeah, reality right. of today getting, getting was too close, to the, too close to the film. Yeah. <laughs> scary. Was a, wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about the future has you optimistic and inspired? Well, what has me optimistic about it is that I'm beginning to recognize the change. I knew the change was potentially available, that I know civilizations are based on belief systems, and that the belief systems that underlie the current civilizations, uh, uh, current civilization, has been modified by new science. Mm -hmm. And the new beliefs offered by science are all beliefs that really push us toward community, cooperation, harmony, balance with nature. Uh, and return yeah. us to the more animistic ways yeah. uh, as a necessary way to evolve. What's very interesting is I started lecturing on this in 1985, and I've seen over that time period audiences grow and grow and grow, uh, more professional people being involved and, mm -hmm. and more medical doctors coming into this picture. So I have been actually physically observing an evolution of people thinking differently, increasing in their numbers, and now if you just go on the internet you realize, although the papers don't talk about it a lot, there's a massive underground movement of change. Absolutely. And, uh, and this will manifest in, in, in that spontaneous moment. Yeah. Uh, and change the direction of civilization almost overnight. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you are fascinating. I was just trying to take it all in. Thank you so much. No, absolutely fascinating talking to you. Really, I could keep going forever, but we're out of time, so thank you. Thank I appreciate you the opportunity. Thank, thank you so you. much, Mary. Yeah.